everyone, it's Keely from Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me. I'd like to start this week's video by saying a huge thank you to everyone who has been subscribing to the channel and watching along. I really do appreciate all of your support and I do read all of your comments and take on board all of your suggestions as well. Just over two weeks ago, we did go over that 1,000 subscriber mark, and I also met the second criteria, which put the channel into review to be a part of the YouTube Partnership Program. And as promised, if we are a part of that program, I will start bringing to you some of the recipes of the products that I am bringing to you in these videos. Now, today's recipe is included down in the information box down below. And you will notice that when I share my recipes, I do give you um, set percentages for some ingredients. And then for others, I give you a collective amount. And these are generally for the hard butters and oils and also for the soft oils. And this is so that you can change a recipe to be something that you want it to be and really make that recipe into your own. So with Christmas just around the corner, I have been working on making gift packs up and I want to make up some of my pamper foot um, packs and one of the items going in is going to be my sea salt and pumice emulsified scrub so I thought I'd take you along today and show you how I make them so let's go okay so I have been through and I have sanitized all my benches and my equipment with a 10% bleach solution I do have my hair net on and we're just popping on a pair of gloves as well and the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out the shea butter for this one so and then I'm also going to weigh out the cocoa butter before popping it in to a double boiler just to very slowly melt it down. cocoa and shea butters melted down and I like to use both of these because they are both very moisturizing butters and the cocoa butter is very skin softening and because this is for the feet I was looking for something that was going to help soften the skin on our feet which is very hard. The next thing I'm going to add in is some grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil is known to silk, sink into the skin very quickly and has a very silky feel to it. So we'll add this one in and then we'll move on to some camellia oil. So the camellia oil comes from off the tea bush. It has a really silky, lovely feel to it and it is rich in vitamins as well. It's a very, it's a non-greasy oil, which is why I do like to use it in a lot of my products. And it has a very long shelf life too. So that's great for when you're creating products in mass and you know that they're going to sit on the shelf for a little while before selling. Um, and it's also known to have some rejuvenating properties for the skin cells. And I do have another bottle of this one in the cupboard ready to go. The next oil or soft oil I am adding in is some fractionated coconut oil. I use a lot of fractionated coconut oil because it does have a very long shelf life. So it's great to add into all of your products except for soap making. Um, it has a non-greasy feel to it and it also easily washes out. So that means if you're making a massage um, oil, this is the best one to use because it will actually come out of sheets very easily. Because this scrub is going to be washed off the feet, um, it is always nice to have an oil that is easy to come, like to actually wash off. So we'll include that one. So the next thing I'm going to add into here is some emulsifying wax. Now even though there is no actual water in this um, particular product, it is coming into contact with water. So as it comes into the contact with water, it will then emulsify with the oils in this and create that sort of lotion feel. So we're going to add this one in here. Now I probably should have actually added this in with the cocoa and shea butter and then melted it down all together but we've had a lot going on and um, I just completely forgot to do so. So I'm going to add in this. I am also going to add in some steric acid and that is just to help with the hardening of this scrub. So we'll grab the steric acid here and then I am going to go and pop this back into my double boiler to get the 
um, the stearic acid and the emulsifying wax to melt back down for me. I'm not going to heat it up too high because I don't want to damage the property of any of these oils in here. So I'll just gently heat that until that is all done. And just before also going to put that back into the double boiler, in this container here I have some beeswax. Now I get this beeswax from off a friend who has some beehives in the local area. It smells beautiful and it does have, or well beeswax is meant to have some very good antiseptic properties which I think is brilliant for feet um, and it is also going to help with hardening up of this emulsified scrub. So we'll just get in what I need here and then I'm going to go and melt this lot down. Okay, so we've got everything now nicely melted down and what I'm going to do next is add in a little bit of green mica. I tend to find that the mica is more soluble in oil so I want to be able to put it in here so it disperses nice and evenly. So I'll add just a fraction in there and we'll stir it through those oils. Okay, so before I do much more now, what I want to do is make, get these oils back down to a temperature that is about 35 to 40 degrees so I can add in some preservative. So I'm just going to sit and let this cool for a little bit. Okay, so this has been sitting here and cooling down. I can tell it's almost ready to go because it is starting to set on the spoon and it also gets that real opaque look um, to it as the oils cool rather than that clear look that hot oils have. So I'm just going to grab my thermometer and take the temperature. Whenever you are using these infrared thermometers, it takes a reading from off the top of whatever you're pointing it at. So it's always best to give your product a bit of a stir when you're trying to get a reading using these thermometers, just to make sure that the bottom of your product isn't sitting really hot and the top of it is cool or at that sort of room temperature. So doing this, I'm down to about 40 degrees Celsius. So now I know I'm right to add in my fragrance and my um, preservative. So my foot creams and foot scrub is one of the few products that I will actually use essential oils in here. And I use a blend of rosemary, peppermint and lavender in this one. If you are looking for some really good blends of fragrances or essential oils, pop onto the essential oils calculator, put in which essential oils that you want to use and it will give you a blend of essential oils that will work well together and that's how I discovered this blend. I can't remember what it was called but I have used it several times now and I generally make the blends up in these little bottles and then I tip them out into my product rather than trying to measure out tiny little amounts of each of the oils. So you can pretty much put whichever blend of oils that you want in here. Most people do go for that sort of peppermint blend for their foot, um, but it really depends. Some people can't stand it, but you may want some other oils like tea tree that have those really nice properties that are associated with foot care. So the next thing I'm also going to add in is my preservative. Now because this has no water in it, I have to pick a preservative that is an that is dispersible or soluble into oil. So my usual, which is Nipagard SCE, is only for water-based products, um, whereas Nipagard SCV is the one that I'm going to use in this one today because I know it will actually dissolve into the oils and help to protect it. Now, because there is no water, some people would say that you don't need to add a preservative. However, um, the idea is people will be using this product around water. So to be on the safe side, I like to add the preservative just in case they do put wet hands into the product and that then introduces water into the, um, the little pot. So just to be on the safe side, that goes in there. And then I can add in my exfoliants. Okay, so for the exfoliants, I like to use a combination of salt and pumice. And with my salts, I also like to use a combination there. And you can use whichever salts that you want. I have this one from Heirloom Bath and Body called Medium Flossy Salt. I'm going to add a little bit of that in. It is just basically a sea salt, but it's the grain on them 
that I'm quite interested in. So if I actually pop these into my hand, it, that's the grain that you get with the medium. And then the other one that I use is a little bit of fine sea salt. So I'll grab some of that out of the bucket. And this one's a bit... And you can see that with the fine sea salt, it is, as it says, fine. So having the combination of the two different salts in there, you are going to get different exfoliating feelings. So I'm going to pop that in there. Um, so I'm going to use a combination of the two. I'm going to use more of the flossy sea salt than I use of the fine, simply because the pumice is also quite a fine exfoliant as well. But what I tend to find, I don't like anything too rough on my feet. Um, and I find that the pumice is just really nice um, as an extra on the feet as well. So we've got our medium. I'm going to now add in some of this fine and I'm just going to break it up in my hand because it's a little bit clumpy here. That's enough of that one. Oops, helps if you put the right lids back on the buckets. And then I'm also going to stir in this pumice. that back there and I'm going to give this a good stir and then we're going to pot it up. So something to take into consideration if you are wanting to colour your foot scrub and you are using pumice in there if you just use plain salt you don't need to worry about this but if you are using that pumice in there as well the pumice is going to turn your green into a, a slightly grayer shade of green but that's okay i actually quite like this color and i think it matches well with that sort of rosemary sort of smell so that is now all stirred in there and i'm going to go and get the containers and i'm going to start potting this one up Okay, so if you have ever watched any of my videos before, you know usually I would actually put my product into a piping bag and pipe it in. I have tried doing that with this particular product, but it really just does not work very well. I end up losing more of it in the piping bag when I do that. So this is one of the very few that I will spoon into the pots, and I usually find I then have an awful lot of cleanup because I make it quite a messy job of this. So we will see how we go today. when it comes to actually weighing out the ingredients when it comes to packaging. A uh, reason being is that we do have some quite strict packaging rules and I imagine most countries do and if it's anything like ours it's actually quite hard to find the information about packaging um, but we do have inspectors come round to the craft markets and they do weigh products to make sure that you have got the correct weights listed on your products now they also have that sort of thing that um you you can be over and you can be under but there's certain percentages that you're allowed to be over and under by and so i always do package mine up to be over what they're labeled at but also within those sort of guidelines which is about uh, depending what you're making different things have different sort of guidelines um soaps are different to these sort of packages uh, like to what's actually fully sealed and there's different rules about how you can write what the weights actually are on them as well and because i actually weigh out all of my ingredients in percentages and by weight 
everything that goes into this bowl should actually then make exactly however many products that I've said that I'm going to make. So we'll get the last of this bowl scraped out and then we should have all of our pots at the right weight. Okay, so these are now all potted up. They are still a little bit warm and they're sitting in those 30 degree sort of mark. So what I'm going to do, because it's late in the afternoon, I'm going to put a paper towel over the top of these and I'm going to leave them overnight to cool down to a room temperature in those low to mid 20s. And then I'll come and pop the lids on and label them up for you. Now the reason being is if I actually put a lid on here now because they are warm it will build condensation up inside that lid and even though we've got a preservative system in there you really don't want to add any extra moisture into the product that is not necessary within there. So we'll come back later and we'll finish these off. Okay so these have been sitting and cooling overnight. They are now all nicely set and nice and firm in the pot and all that oil has been emulsified into the um, salts in there. So now it's time to get them lidded and labelled. So I'm just going to pop all my lids on first and then we're going to get to labelling. Now so the first thing I'm going to do is pop my little stickers on the top here and all it is it's just my pumice and salt foot scrub. I print all of these up myself. I get the labels from Labels Express, a company here in, um, in Australia but labels Blank labels, I think they're called, or labels online. That's the American equivalent. Um, and then I print them, I design all my labels in Corel Draw and I print them all up myself on a HP laser. I just find this to be the best way for me. It means that if I need to swap an ingredient in a product, I can quite easily do that. Or if I decide because I suddenly start buying one ingredient in bulk that I can add an extra ingredient, it's nice and easy and quick for me to be able to change the labels to what I actually need them to be and don't have to worry about getting hundreds of them printed and making sure that I use every single one of them. So we'll get the tops on there and then the next bit that I pop around the outside of my jar we have some extra little stickers and these have got all of my ingredients the date or to when to use it by, it's got how to use the product and all of my other details as well. And then the final thing, and I get lots of questions about this, is what I put onto the bottom of my jars. And I have these little stickers here. You can see there's quite a few on there. This I print up on a Brother label printer. And these are the dates in which I make the product. So on the ingredients label there's a little bit that says use within 12 months um, of making or may even be six months it just depends and then I put the batch date on the bottom of all of these and it means that I can actually print up a whole sheet of my ingredients labels and not have to worry about changing the date on them so I'm going to get all these labels on and then we're going to um, seal them with a shrink band is looking for a heat gun here in Australia I do highly recommend this heat gun I got this one from Bunnings and it's one of their Ozito range the really good thing with this heat gun this red dial on here which you saw me probably have a play with while doing that it's actually a temperature gauge so I find when I use my shrink bands I need a slightly higher um, temperature than I do for the shrink wrap which is a lot um, lighter in weight. If I use too high a temperature, it actually bursts holes in it, so I can turn it down or up to what I want it to be. It also means if I'm doing something like lip balm that has a quite a low melt point, I can turn it down to a low temperature and know that I'm not melting the product on the inside. So it is a really good heat gun for anyone that is looking for a good one. So that is all of the pumice and salt foot scrubs done up. My next job will be to make some of the foot cream to go with it so we can make the packs up. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make 
my pumice and salt foot scrub if you did why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below and if you've got any questions I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can and if you haven't already why not subscribe to the channel and each week I will bring you a new video whether it be bath and body or soap making so until the next time have a good one bye